Since Resident Evil Village is only a few days away, I thought I'd get more into the sinister backstory over Lady Dimitrescu's castle cellar and what's happening within it. To start this off, the cellar is kept hidden in the castle, like very hidden. Every entrance that I've seen that leads to the cellar was not in plain sight. Like for instance here in the beginning of the castle demo, we had to open up this fireplace gate and then back in here we could find a tunnel system that leads to one of the cellar entrances. So this goes to show there were probably plenty of people that were in the castle that had no idea about this cellar even existing. This seems to be one of the family's secrets within the castle because there are plenty of secretive doors to get down into the cellar. It's insane. So they were definitely trying to keep this hidden from others. At least this part of the cellar anyways this is like a torture dungeon or something but yeah as you can see here at the first entrance to the cellar that we come across this one is blocked off unfortunately but we get a glimpse of some things that are on the outside of this entrance such as the shoes on the floor the random bottles on the floor as well also there are candles that could be lit to light the way as well as a lantern here right before going down into the cellar so that kind of sets the mood over how dark it is down there and it is extremely dark like when you first go inside this place you have to turn on your flashlight because it's so dark entering into it like think about that just complete darkness and coldness down in here man this game has some eerie lore to it but anyways you can also see like leashes here as you can see on the side before entering into it there's also some rope as well as this chain connected to this hood Anyways, moving on from this first entrance, I just wanted to give you guys the vibe over how hidden the cellar is within the castle. As you can see, though, at the end of this hall here, from that first entrance that we encountered, we can go ahead and pick up this maroon eye ring, and that will then activate the secret door to open up. So something interesting about this secret wall door here is that it can only open up from the other side. So it's as if it's just made as an exit from the cellar or the fireplace entrance, whichever way you come out from. By the way, when you first exit out, you can find a crystal fragment right here inside this display case. You just have to bust it open. Just wanted to point that out for those of you that may not know about it. But yeah, anyways, from this, I wanted to now take you up to uh, the wine room, which is at the top floor up here we got to go up a couple flight of stairs as you can see at the top up here we can find the wine room and when we go inside this we can find something that we can examine that's on the table here and it states the winemaking techniques of Castle Dimitrescu can be traced as far back as the 15th century long before the current occupants of the castle wow the 15th century that is a very long time I'm assuming whatever they're producing here is making them immortal. I don't know for sure though, but what got me kind of questioning this first sentence here is long before the current occupants of the castle. So who was here before Lady D and her gang? I wonder if they were evil as well, like her and the others that she's rolling around with. Because it did state that this winemaking technique has been traced back to the 15th century. Now, did she just decide to top it off with some blood randomly? Or has that always been an ingredient here? I don't know, this has me questioning it a bit. Who knows, the previous occupants could have been her parents or something. Because it seems like her and her family are immortal. Or at least figured out a way to not age anymore. Because for one example, we can find a maiden's diary, which I'll be getting more into this further in this video. But within this diary, we can see it dates back into the 50s. 1958 to be exact. And Resident Evil 8 actually takes place, I believe, in the year 2020 or 2021 or something like that. So this at least goes to show they're in their 60s. And they definitely don't look nor get around like they're that age. So it wouldn't really be far-fetched if they have been around here since the 15th century. And they've just kept their age by the special wine that they've been drinking. And if the previous occupants did know about this evil immortality potion... Or whatever whatever happened to them i wonder if they're still around actually somewhere to be real i don't really know right now about this all i've really experienced is what the demo had to offer i might get more into this though in a future video if i ever do figure out who the previous occupants were and what they were about anyways carrying on here it states alcina dimitrescu uses the legendary yet peculiar technique to enrich the wine's flavor intensity 
and bestow it with a thick bouquet. By the way, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing anything. Hopefully, you can still find this enjoyable. Anyways, carrying on here, it says her best vintage is Sangus Virginis. I probably butchered that. Uh, anyways, it means maiden's blood. It is kept in a special ornate bottle decorated with intricate silver flowers. So yeah, just from examining this, we learn quite a bit about the backstory here. First off, the techniques of this winemaking can be traced as far back as the 15th century. So this wine has been around for a very long time, and I'm assuming is what's getting them to keep their youth and be immortal. You know, typical vampire stuff. But yeah, anyways, it also states here long before the current occupants of the castle. I'm not exactly sure if there was someone here before Dimitrescu or if it's always been. I mean, I don't really know right now, to be real with you. I've only played the demo so far. But yeah, to get further into detail about all of this, within the demo, we got to use the maroon eye gemstone that was on that ring on this statue face here. And this opened up a secret door. And when we go through this, we got one of our first encounters against one of the evil sisters here. However, we're not gonna be able to do anything to her here. So our option is to run down this hallway and go through what seems to be Lady D's changing room because you can see some of her outfits inside this room here. Anyways, within this changing room, we can find another secret entrance by opening up this wall over here. And the crazy thing about this entrance into the cellar, it seems as if this is where things would be dropped into the cellar at. Now, I'm not exactly sure if that means bodies or not, but you can definitely tell this is a chute that just sends things down into here. Kind of eerie, especially how this is hidden inside of Lady D's changing room. Anyways, besides that point, there's something extremely important that we find down here that explains what some of the maidens went through when living at this castle. We can find one of the maidens' diaries right over here on this cart. As you can see, it reads June 9th, 1958. The maiden said here, it was my first day working at the castle today. I was most shocked to see the other staff were all women. The mistress and her daughters were very adamant that they wouldn't bite. It was quite peculiar. Anyways, the next diary in this page is written two weeks later, as you can see. It's been two weeks since I started working at the castle and I am a little afraid. Another maid, Adela, made a mistake and Miss Daniela slashed her face with a knife. And at night I can hear wailing as if ghosts roam the halls. I want to go home. Last thing that was documented from this maiden was on July 8th, 1958. I don't know what to do. The young ladies were complaining it was too hot and stuffy during dinner, so I opened the window just a crack. Shut it! Shut it now! They all shrieked at me in unison. I fear I may be taken down into the cellar, never to be seen of again. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do! So as you can see, she was in a frantic over her last document. And it seems like that might have been the last of her. As well as the other maidens too, and you'll see why further in this. Anyways, next part, as you can see, we'll go down these stairs and we'll see these barrels at the end of this tunnel. Which, uh, you're about to see what's actually inside these barrels. Anyways, if we crawl through this tunnel right here, this is our first in-game encounter that we got of Lady D within the castle demo, as Ethan Winters, that is. I know there was also the Maiden's demo, too, that some of us got to experience. But either way, at this point, I went ahead and went into photo mode real quick because I saw she was holding something, and I wanted to see what exactly she was holding on my second time through this demo before my time ran out. But yeah, if you look closely at what she's holding, she's holding what seems to be a wine bottle filled with blood. I believe this is the wine bottle that was described to us earlier within that book that we could examine in the wine room. The uh, Sangus Virginis or whatever, uh, meaning maiden's blood, which I believe that is what she's holding here. Um, the only thing that's a little different in the description, it states that it's decorated with intricate silver flowers, and you can see it here decorated with intricate gold flowers. So that's the only difference. Maybe what she's holding has a, a even higher status than what was described to us within the book in the wine room. Either way, when you enter into this room, Lady D will exit out of it right before you enter, and if you investigate a little bit, you will notice this barrel cracked open with a hand coming out. So this explains what's in the barrels. I'm not exactly sure if every single barrel within this cellar has a body in it, but it seems like 
some of them do I mean as you can see here with this one and the blood is actually dripping from the bottom of it too like this is seriously some gruesome stuff but just this one little detail we can kind of get an idea over what may be inside the rest of the barrels down here but anyways yeah that's about it for this room before carrying on though going deeper into the cellar you could find a crystal fragment at the top here just something to point out Anyways, carrying on here, we're getting kind of close to the torture dungeon of the cellar. But before we carry on to that, if you notice right before we go into the dungeon, we can find more of those barrels. And it seems like there's another hint at a body inside a barrel, or at least there's blood filled inside this barrel over here because you can see that it's like overflowing out of it. I don't know, I thought that was an interesting detail to point out because it helps explain the story a bit more over what's inside these barrels. At least it seems like some of them anyways. I don't know about every single barrel being filled with a body or blood because we don't have actual proof of that, but it seems like that might be the case. Anyways, from this cellar room filled with barrels, we then want to go into here and we're just going to have to light each torch to unlock this secret door. This secret door is actually the torture dungeon of the cellar and it's pretty frightening what exactly Lady D and her family are doing down here to the maidens. The frightening thing about this dungeon in the cellar is that it's used to get the main ingredient of that special wine that we're reading about in the wine room which is maiden's blood and one of the wine making techniques that are used is actually keeping the maidens alive while they drain their blood because apparently it tastes sweeter or something. We can actually hear one of the sisters say that when we're getting chased down here from her. Give up yet? Squeeze the blood out when they're alive and it's that much sweeter. So yeah, from that terrifying dialogue that we got from Miss Daniela, we get an idea over what the Maidens actually experienced when being down here. Not only were they tortured and killed, but they were also kept alive for as long as they could be because apparently the blood is sweeter to them when they're alive compared to when they are dead. So that is one of their secrets to their wine making techniques or whatever. But man, this is seriously twisted. There are some seriously brutal stuff going on inside this castle. And it seems like it's been happening for centuries. Anyways, we can also find some other things down in this dungeon that gives a little bit more of the backstory over what happened here. First off, with this note here that we can examine next to what seems to be some medical supplies. But uh, on this, it states the candidates and rejects. We have four candidates and 12 rejects. Not exactly sure why 12 were rejected and only four were chosen. Might be due to the kind of blood they had or something. I'm not exactly sure. But either way, this little thing that we can examine here goes to show that they're selecting certain individuals as well. They're not accepting every single one down here. I'm assuming, once again, it has something to do with their blood because that's what this place down here is used for. It's literally used to drain people's blood for their special wine or whatever. Like, this is terrifying. We can also find something else that goes to show that they were experimenting with these individuals as well because over here we got like the results over those individuals that were selected as candidates. As you can see, we have three of them that have robust appetites and Ingrid being the only one unstable and overly alert at times. I'm not exactly sure why she wasn't having like the common results it seems as the others. It could be because she had this necklace on that was supposed to ward off evil. As you can see, the description for Ingrid's necklace reads, necklace of animal bones used to ward against evil. Either way, in the end, it didn't seem to work as good as she wanted because as you could see, how you even get this necklace is by taking out one of these creatures that you'll encounter that's down here in the dungeon. So this necklace helps correlate everything together to go to show that what we're fighting down here are actually maidens that were being used for the wine. Not every single maiden, but some of them. We learned in the wine room when we went to go examine that book that her best vintage is Sangus Virginis, meaning maiden's blood. So that's the main ingredient that they need for her best vintage, which is I'm assuming what's keeping their youth and making them not age. 
But yeah, just being able to find Ingrid's necklace really helps correlate the whole story that was being told down here with the notes that we could examine within the dungeon. I don't know how exactly they're like an undead army now, but after taking a closer look at them, you could definitely tell they were malnourished and drained of pretty much all of their blood because they are super skinny and just dried out looking. Uh, but how they are still roaming around and whatnot, I'm not exactly sure quite yet. I'm sure we'll figure more out about that, of course, when the full game releases. As for now, this is basically all the info I could really gather about what's going down in Lady D's dungeon during the castle demo. Hopefully, this helps explain a bit more over some of what's happening inside this castle. And if you find this kind of content enjoyable over Resident Evil Village and would like me to continue this kind of thing, consider leaving a like on the video. That'd be greatly appreciated. But yeah, I'm out of here, everyone. Thanks for taking the time, watching, and listening. Until next time, peace.